hello guys it's your boy drop code suits once again and i want to welcome you guys back to the javascript crash course so before we get started i just want to quickly apologize to the viewers out there who have been waiting for the javascript crash course uh, i want to really apologize because i haven't released the video i'm supposed to have released it two weeks ago but i've been working on a project with my team and i haven't been able to focus on youtube for a while but i want to promise you guys that the next uh, videos are going to be coming in frequently on mondays and i really appreciate if you guys always drop in the likes and continue to subscribe to the channel so if you're new on this channel please make sure you hit the subscribe button and if you want to follow the web development course right from the html video i have the link down in the description for you to go over and check it out so without wasting much of your time let's get started so what is javascript javascript is a programming language actually javascript is the first programming language i learned when um going into web development so it's also the first programming language we're also going to learn in web development because it works both on the front end and the back end but for now we're going to be focusing on the basics of javascript and these basics are kind of general it's not limited to javascript alone these basics these basic concepts are also used in other programming languages so if you learn it now and you learn it well it's going to be easier for you when you want to write java or you want to learn python because the basics also apply in those programming languages the only difference is the syntax of writing them in those programming languages so without wasting much of your time let's jump in and start writing some code so right here i have my code editor which i'm using which is visual studio code so before this let me not stress you guys out so i went into my desktop here created a new file a new folder called javascript and in there i have my index.html and my main.js so i want you guys to create your folder anywhere you want to create it anywhere you feel comfortable to create it so you just create a folder name it anything you want to name it then open it up using your text editor which is either sublime text or anyone you want to use it doesn't really matter so right now this is just basic html nothing much here just the basic snippets in writing html which is just few lines of code so i have this page right here which i'm going to open up in the browser so to do that i'm just going to go to my browser and reload this page then you have javascript for beginners right there then here i opened up my console area which is very important too because we're going to be making use of this console tab right here so i want you guys to hit your ctrl shift i button on your keyboard to open up this control area and if you're on a mac system you can hit command shift i to do that or you can just basically you can also hit your f12 button i think that also works so anyone you want to use just open up the development um, tools area and move over to the console tab because we're going to be making use of this tab quite a lot so i'm just going to go back to my code editor which i have here so there are different ways of linking your javascript file to your html document you can either do it inside within your html document which is going to go like this you write a script tag then it also contains your closing tag with it then all your javascript code is going to go in here inside here your script tag and we are going to be making use of this method because i want to keep it simple i don't want to do something complex that will scare you guys off so we're just going to create this simple tag which is called the script tag and it also has a closing tag but for some of you out there who want to know how the other method is done you have the source property 
then inside of this property you just want to link in your javascript file basically the javascript file can be located in any way in the directory like mine is located in the same directory with my index.html which is main.js so i'm just going to come over here and write in main.js here like that but if it's inside a folder you want to do a dot slash the name of the folder if it's js folder then another slash to locate the file you're trying to get but since we're not going to be using that to just to keep it simple i'm just going to leave it with a script tag like that let's remove this so i'm just going to close the tab we're not going to be using that so to get more screen for you guys to see what i'm doing so the first thing i want to introduce here in this javascript is writing variables in javascript and what are variables variables are basically a way of holding data in javascript or and in any programming language in general so let's say we have variable numbers and we want to equal to that to 30. so basically this 30 is being stored inside this variable numbers that's basically what a variable is so it just takes in it stores data for you it holds data for a limited time for you then you can make use of the data manipulate the data in any way you want to do that so in um, javascript to declare a variable we make use of the let the let um, this thing, i don't know what to call it but we make use of this let to um, name a variable renaming variables before when we used to write javascript that was like not so not way back but like last year or last two years we make use of the var keyword but to prove that you're improving and you're as a programmer programming you have to always be ready to make changes that mean meaning uh, what what i'm trying to say is that as a programmer you must be ready to learn new things because programming is always improving new technologies are always coming so you have to be able to learn new things and as new technology comes your way you have to be able to learn those new technologies and make use of them very well so we're going to be making use of the let instead of the var keyword to create a variable so a variable is simply holding just one number which is 30 and to print that out i'm going to use the console the log if you remember i told you guys to open up the console area and i'm going to put in the name of the variable which is numbers in there then save like that always remember to terminate your code you need to always do that then i'm going to go over to my browser here and reload and we get 30 as you can see so i'm basically printing out the um data which is being held by the variable number right here on the console area <coughs> sorry for that so that's one way of doing a um, variable then the next thing i want to talk to you guys about are the naming conventions for naming variables so variables can be named in different ways uh, but there are some rules which we have to follow in javascript for naming variables so the first thing is that you can't have a number in front of a variable name it's not accepted so if you have something like this then it equals it to 30 then we have a console.log then takes in one number like that we save that then it's not supposed to separate that because it's kind of a variable so here we're just going to put that back together so if it's going to do it again but I think that's the way it works. I have to take that out. But I'm not just going to show you guys that because it's even giving us an error. Because we're not supposed to have a number before um letters in JavaScript. If you're going to be writing your variables, you don't want to make the mistake to write numbers in front of it. So that's not allowed in JavaScript. That is one thing to note, guys. So the next thing I want you guys to note is that JavaScript can be written using the camel case um method of writing variables meaning you start your variable name basically with a lower case then when you want to write the next word like value you start with upper case like that so this is called the camel case way of writing 
um, variables then we also have another way of writing variables which is mostly popular in writing php so we have this underscore method which we can also use but i don't i've never used the underscore method i'm always using the camel case anytime i'm writing javascript so i, I feel you guys to use that and th you're going to be seeing a lot of programmers using the camel case so if you're not really used to it it might be hard for you to transition when you get a place to work or when you start working with other programmers so it's better to make use of the camel case so that's that that's all for variable the next thing we're going to be moving into is area i want to make this video quite short and um effective so we're going to move into arrays so what are arrays so arrays are also like variables but you create variables that take in multiple data there are also variables but they don't take in one data like just 30 they take in multiple data so i'm just going to create a variable called colors like that equals to this kind of bracket you have to make use of this bracket that's the most popular way of writing an array so i'm going, just going to be showing you guys the popular way of doing things that are very very common we're not going to be going really in depth like that but i just want you guys to learn what you need to learn to move on and learn other things like that you don't need to learn some unnecessary things because it's just going to be a waste of time so to write in to put in um, values in here we're going to have color white then use the comma to separate your um, variables your values inside your array so you have t here comma then we have the red color here so i'm just going to be putting in three values into the array so if you want to print out values in the array this also applies not only when because i'm making use of console log if you're printing the values into like um, an html document or something like that it still applies so we say console log and inside you want to call in the color variable colors then you want the same bracket you use to create the array then use zero to print out white so the reason why i'm using zero instead of one is that in programming it actually counts things by making use of starting with zero it goes from zero to one to two and like that like that so it doesn't start from one it starts from zero one two like that that is where things are counted in javascript and it applies to other programming language too that is why when i said that what you're going to be learning in this crash course is going to be applicable both in java and other programming language the only difference is the syntax of applying this same concept so just understand the concept then you can try to get the syntax better later but just try and understand how it works that's the main thing understanding how javascript works so i'm just going to print out the colors go back to my browser reload the page then we get color white right here so that's one if you want to print out one so i want to print out the red color so just do two go to my browser reload then we have red so go back to my code editor if i want to print out the entire um, array of colors just um, do it like that then reload then we have the entire array of color then if you scroll down we have white teal and red so that's for that that's for arrays so the next thing i'll talk to you guys about is uh le let's go over to um what we call but before i go back to objects objects i just want to show you guys how you can add and um, more values into the array if you want to so you have the array colors you only have three in there but that doesn't mean that you cannot add extra colors into that array so you want to do that you just basically use colors dot push so this is a method in javascript sometimes you may have properties properties don't have parentheses around them but if you're using methods methods take in parentheses because they contain values inside so you're going to put in the color you want to push into the area purple 
purple like that so after doing that it's going to push that color right into the colors array so if i want to print that out i'm going to bring down the console log right here under after pushing it then i want to see colors then three and that's where purple is going to be so go over to my browser and reload then we have purple you see it actually pushes that color into the array that's one way of adding values into your array so to go over to object i'm not going to be rushing you guys like that i know it's looking like i'm rushing you guys but i'm trying my best to explain in the best way possible so in objects objects are very very popular because we make use of objects when we want to take in um user data in multiple formats so it, a user can have more than one value like that it can have a name age you can you can also collect data for address and other things like that and we want to store them in a very neat and nice um, looking format so the best thing we're going to be making use of is objects so we want to create a variable which is going to hold an object so we call it a um, variable of user like that and this is syntax of writing objects just basically this very simple nothing much then inside there we want to have the name of the user then use the colon to to um put in the value you want to you need it to take in so we have the name you call it john and let's also put the last name together with it john do then we want to comma sorry for that just little messages so we want to also want to take in the age of the user then we have 32 then we also want to take in the let's say the address so we want to take in the address we want to say leave, the guy lives at um, 32 street this is Sir Larry uh, like that so that's the address so this is one user you're taking in one user um, data and storing it in an object so object takes in multiple data and structures them well we make use more of objects when we are dealing with a javascript database or you're trying to pass data from your javascript front end to for or from any front end to a javascript um, database maybe you're using node.js or mongodb to um, store your data and using your node.js to write your backend you make it mostly of objects so these things might look like they are pointless right now but because you don't really know how to apply them very well but i wanted to just take your time and just practice them just learn them the way they are you might not make use of them now but when as things as you move forward in javascript you get to make use of this basic concept you are learning now so i don't want you guys to start coming back to the crash course to learn these things again then go back to node.js so you can understand what the tutorial is saying so it's just basic stuff just learn the basic stuff then go online search for projects simple calculator projects and other small small projects where you can apply these things and apply them like that like that then from there you can see how useful and how to use this concept so let's just continue so if i want to print out this object now we'll say object console.log sorry then inside it i want to put in the object which is user then we use the dot notation to select what we want to print out so we can just print out the object like that then we go to array also like that so i'm not going to take down this slide because i really want my browser to be here so it can be easy for me to switch switch back in so i'm going to be viewing the browser here 
So if I reload that, we get the total, like the entire object displayed here on the console. So we have the person's name, the address, the age, and all the data we've collected. So I'm just going to display just the name. So to do that, we're going to be using the, the dot notation as I said before. Then we pick in the name like that. And we go back to the browser and reload. Then we have John Doe. Exactly. So that's very basic. It's not hard. It's very easy to grab and understand. That's what an object is. Then sometimes you want to add in objects within an object. So instead of taking it like this, you can also have another curly bracket like this. Then taking the street separately. Then we have the um, let's see, so really like that. Then we also have the city. Then let's see. Let's just call it anything. Let's also push really, really like that. Then we also have the states, and the state is Lagos, like that. So if you want to select the address, you just do user dot address then use dot again then select either the city the state or the streets so i'm not going to select the state then i'm going to let's check that out in the browser so if i reload this i get lagos which is the state so that's for that that's for objects there are also other way of writing objects objects goes more complicated than this but I don't want to make things look too hard for you guys. I just want you guys to grab the basics and um, chew on that first before we go really deep inside the, all these things. So the next thing I want to show you guys about JavaScript are uh, what I call conditionals. So we have conditionals. So conditionals are basically um, used for validation in javascript or you, want, you don't want to bring out a particular data yet on the browser you want it to wait for some time or check for some things before printing out that data so you can make use of conditions to do that the first condition i'm going to be taking you guys through is the if statement the if conditions so we have the if so before i write this so i want to quickly put down some variables so let's say number um first number let me call this first number so to make it much more simple to understand then equals to let's say 10 then we want to say let second equals to 30 like that so we have two values now and i want to check for the, the variable with the highest value so to check for that and print it out so if i want to do that i'm going to make use of the if there's also you can make use of the while loop or the for loop for that oh sorry i'm talking about loops here i'm mixing things up <laughs> sorry about that but you can make use of the if statement in situations like this to check for which which um variable is greater than the other variable so do that i'm also going to say if first number is greater we're using the greater than sign greater than second so i want to print out something so i want it to carry out what is going to be inside this curly brackets that is why we have the curly bracket so it takes in the action so we have the condition which is if then the condition goes into the um parentheses which is number first number if first number is greater than second number i want to console the log um saying first number is greater mm, little error here like that so we are checking if the first number is greater than the second number and if it's greater i want to print out first number as greater but what if the first number is not actually greater than the second number so what do we do in situations like that that is why we have the else 
some people will like to write it out they want to write the else if second number is greater than um, first number then print out the first um, second number or some people like to write if first number is less than the second number so people like to write if first number is not greater than so so there are different ways of writing that but to save yourself the stress you just need the else then open your bracket like that then you want to console the log saying second number is greater simple so all you need is the first um condition right here which says first number is greater than second number and if it's actually greater than the second number it's going to print out first number is greater but if it's not greater it's going to go for the second um printout which is second number is greater so let's see how that works out we get second number is greater as you can see because obviously first number is 10 while second number is 30 so obviously second number is greater than the first number the next thing we want to look at now i want to show you guys some other operators that can be used is you can the other operators we can use we can use if it equals to second number like that they want to print yes it's equal they are equal and if they are not equal i also want to print not equal like that so if i go over there and reload you get not equal because obviously they are not equal to each other but what if we now change the values to make them equal to each other what do we get so we have 30 as the first number second number we also have 30. so let's see what happens so if i reload the page it says they are not equal no, that's surprising i'm not supposed to see that uh, we have 30 here we have 30 here so let me tell you this saying they are equal not equal i mean oh, it's like i didn't look at that yeah they are equal oh sorry for that guys so it's actually saying the right thing is correct so it's saying they are equal so that that's the way javascript works it's very powerful this this is only the basic but you know when you you're, when you're learning a new programming language it might seem that what you're learning at that moment is not doesn't make sense but it actually makes sense because this is just basically logic in programming so you just want to get the how things are working how it's checking for the values how it's um, um the statement is working and stuff like that you just want to really get that so next thing i want to show you guys is the triple equals to you know here we used two equals to that equals to equals to to check for the values then if you add another equals to what does it do so i'm going to control z okay then add the other equals to back there so what if in situations whereby you have a string here so string string is we have number we have string so string is like you're writing text yeah string is basically a text where number is an actual value actual number so now we have a text saying 30 and we have a a number yeah an actual value saying 30 so how is our programming language going to fish out the difference between the number and the text that is where the triple equals to come in so the third equals to sign checks for the data type of the two values we are comparing here so if they are equal it will tell us that they are equal but if they are not based on the data type it tell us they are not equal so let's check that out and reload still saying they are equal how come suppose they are not, they are not equal and save this okay i didn't save the file so when i reload this we get not equal so it's checking for the data type of the values but if i go back and change this equal to, to the double equals to and save go to the browser and reload you get they are equal because they are both 30 30 but they are not actually equal to each other 
because this is a text and this is a value so you have to put that in mind you have to know when to use which so if you want to use double quotes to check for simple stuff but if you're doing deep um, security validations in javascript you have to make use of the triple quotes to, to secure your data variable so since that's done that's the if statement so i'm not going to i'm not going to clean that out i'm not going to comment comment that like that so the next thing i want to show you guys is switch case so this is also another way of doing um for checking for data but this one is just slightly different from the one we we've been using which is the if else statement i'm going to comment this out let me comment the other things we've been doing also and then comment this out so i'm not deleting this because i want you guys to actually be able to go back to the video and check for the code and make use of them in wherever um, project you're working on so the next one to work is the switch so we want to create a variable we say let's fruit fruit equals to say orange this example is a very popular example in javascript so we have a fruit called orange so someone is trying to select a fruit is asking the program to select a fruit for him and the program asks the user to input the fruit he or she wants um he or she wants the program to produce so i'm going to put in orange as my value then the program is going to go ahead and check my requests based on the cases available um in the machine so i'm going to write the cases using the switch then in the switch then the switch is going to take in the fruit which is my request so i'm just making it look like that but the actual term for this value is called the parameter but not to just to make things a little bit simpler for you guys to understand so it's taking in my request then it's going to check with the cases it has inside the machine so we're going to see case case it has banana inside so you see bananas then you use the colon then you want to tap over just one tab then you want to write um, you want to console uh, let's um, uh, just give a simple alert alert you guys will see what an alert looks like so we say alert i don't want bananas then full stop the next thing you want to put in is a break so it actually checks for bananas and if you're not looking for since our request is saying orange it's going to break then move over to the next case so it's not going to bring that it's not going to print that out it's just going to check there if, if it doesn't see what it's looking for it breaks out then checks another case so we have case apples here yeah, sorry then inside here you want to also print out a lot then we we'll see i don't want apple i don't want apples man so we're just going to close that then put in the break orange is what we want so we we'll see case and finally we have orange orange yeah orange sorry a mistake there you tab over then you see a lot see yes I want orange so that's that's what we're looking for then you put a break like that then the last thing we will have to add to this is the default so if the program can't find what we're looking for we need a default statement to return back to the u user interface or the ui so what we're going to do is we have a default for that 
so the default always runs when um there is no there is nothing relating to our request so we want to also give an alert like that say sorry i don't have what you want okay so we just want to print out that then we receive then we want to go ahead and run that on our browser so that's all we need so let's move on to our browser and reload you see we get the message yes i want already so this is an alert alert runs like it comes out like a drop down like that so you have yes i want already you click ok thank you for giving me orange then if we change this to apples or we change it to like mango since we don't have mango mangoes or something like that so then we go back to the browser and reload it says sorry i don't have what you want so you see that's the default that's what i'm talking about there's always a need for default because someone else can come and order something that is not on the menu so it just gives the person the default sorry i don't have what you want simple as that so that's the way case switch case works so i'm just going to comment this out so we can move on to the next thing on the agenda so after commenting this out so guys just remind you guys if you're liking this video drop a like and if you don't like the video you can also drop your dislike and always remember to um, subscribe to this channel it's very important it helps this channel to grow and if you have a problem or you have a little challenge in javascript you can post down in the comment below i'll be glad to help you out and you can also make a request of the video you want me to produce so that also works i create content for you guys so if you want a video you're requesting for a video i also work with javascript a lot do react node mongodb and stuff like that so if you want a video on that you can drop a request down in the comments and i will do my best to make that so let's continue with the basics so after doing that next thing i want to introduce you guys to is the loops so i'm going to go over to loop loops so in the loops i'm just going to be taking a basic i'm going to be doing a basic loop so there's i don't really know how to explain what the loop is i can only show you guys and from there explain the way it works so i'm, I'm going to have a for loop here so we want to loop through a particular value so we have a um, value x equals 10 so we have 10 items inside of value x i want to loop through value x to find how many items are inside value x which obviously is 10 but we want the program to check and run that out for us so we're going to say let i equals to zero the reason why we need the i is that the i is going to act as a counter so it's going to help us count the values inside of x so we want to see while i is less than x does i is obviously less than x then we want to increment i by one so we can basically say i plus one but i wouldn't do that i'll just say i plus plus the same thing as saying i plus one which is preferable to use so then what do we want to display after counting all that so we want to console the log we want to console the log i so we want to print out all the values of all the items inside of x you should print them out after it has counted them so let's go back to our browser and see what happens whoa okay i have a little error there i didn't spell console right <coughs> so i missed the end so go back to the browser reload them we have zero down to nine which is actually 10 values but remember i told you guys that um programming language you start counting from zero i don't know why that is the way it is but that's just the way it is so we start counting from zero down to nine so that's for that so if you want to check for that i want it maybe you want to start counting from one you can just make this one thing then you do 
you still make that zero but here you want to do like i think you can do i plus one here is that possible yes let, let's try it out reload then we get one to ten so that works see it works so you get one to ten so you can still have your way and make it start counting from one but initially it still st counts from zero but you just need i plus one to add to for it to start from one so it still works so let's go back that's a for loop that's where a for loop works so it helps you count stuff and uh, they, are, they are very important but for the basics this this is the only way you're going to now to apply it if you want to do some complex things like uh, you know so you, you go to some websites where you have a back button like you know a an arrow button that takes you to the top of the page so you make use of like loop to um, check the total width of the page then stuff like that then when you click on it it takes an event some complex shit like that but we're not going to go into that that's that's going to be in our next video where we're going to be going in depth into practical javascript so i'm just going to take you guys through another type of loop which is called the while loop like that let me make this a comment so we have the while loop so the while loops to is also like the for loop or uh, just slightly different so i'm going to show you why it's different so we have we want to create a variable g which, which is equals to zero which is going to be our counter in this case so we want to see well into the bracket so while g is less than x we are going to make use of the same x we have up there so what do we want to do we want to increment g by one each time then we want to console log g so we see g plus plus terminate that then we have our console log and we have g in there <coughs> so if we go back to our browser and reload then we have one to ten once again so that's the way it works let me just um, comment this so we can see only the one for the while loop x is not defined yes it can't be defined because we also commented it out so you can't get the value for x to compare so once we reload we get one through ten <laughs> so that's another way of writing a loop sorry about that so another way of writing a loop so the next thing to take you guys through is how so there's also another type of loop which is called the for each loop like that so the for each loop it's also like the for loop but it's kind of a more popular way of writing loop in advanced javascript make use of more of the for each like if you're writing Node.js and writing pog alongside Node.js and you want to iterate something in your pog you have to make use of the for each blah 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 like that like that so but i'm not going to show you the basic i'm only telling you where it's applicable for you to know that these things can actually be used in um, other areas of javascript where it's really important so for you to know that the basics are still very important to start to know and to master so i want to take you guys through the for each loop so i'm, I'm going to uncomment the colors here so we can make use of them yeah colors uncomment that so we have colors so we're going to make use of the colors right down here for each loop so we see to do that we say colors dot for each like that then it takes a parenthesis then we have an anonymous function inside there so basically this can get a little bit confusing but you have to take it easy on yourself and try as much as possible to understand this so we have a function in here with a normal way of writing function function then parenthesis then your brackets like that so while we're writing a function inside of for each because we want it for each to carry out something for us we want it to do something so we have to put a function that's going to do um the looping 
of the colors in the colors array so that's why we are doing the function inside the for each not outside of it because it's the for each that's going to carry out the looping but i'm not going to write function that so i'm going to write it in the new way of doing things which is the es6 format so we have the just the parentheses so es6 allows us to take away take out the writing of the function so we just have the parentheses then we have this arrow then we have this as simple as that just just that then you come in here then you want to console log the log color which is like the sing singular version of um, each color inside the colors array so you have the colors array with bunch of colors in it then you want to iterate through those colors then pick them out one by one so you have to take them one by one which is that's why i'm calling it color instead of um colors again because that won't work it has to be color or it can be anything you can call it any other thing you want to call it but you have to put a parameter here then you have to use that here so that's the way it works so if i save that go back to the browser and reload as you can see you get white teal and red so it's going to console log the entire colors in the array but if you're going to be printing out an array normally it's going to be in brackets and you don't want it to be in bracket that's why we make use of the for each because you don't want to be printing out data on your page in brackets so using the for each helps you to prevent that the when the brackets and the commas um, used to store the data so you print it out in normal format then use your CSS to style it in whichever way you want to do that but for the basics I'm not showing you how it works and what's the usefulness of it so that's the for each so as I said the next thing we're going to be taking a look at is um, what else do we have what else do we have sorry i'm checking i'm checking my notes here because i've already lined up um the structure of how the course is going to go so it can be faster so i think that's basically all for now so we're going to go into a little bit of practicality i'm going to be creating a form then we are going to do a simple form validation of that form for you guys so now i'm going to be showing you guys a little bit of manipulation of javascript documents so first of all i'm just going to go over here i think you guys should have the code by now so i'm just going to clear out everything under the script tag like that mm -hmm. so this is basically what i want to do so i'm just going to go ahead here and create just a simple button here so we're going to have button like that open and close tag and inside we want to give the button an id so we want to basically give the button an id so we can target that button through javascript and i'm going to show you guys how to do that so we have an id here we call it um submit okay, btn like that i'm just going to make this camera case you guys come in case is important so i'm also going to give the header an id too so i'm going to call it header like that so we have that so now I'm, i want whenever i click this button it changes the text here in the header so do that we're going to do that through javascript of course so we want to target that button but first we want to give it a click event so what are events events uh basically i don't know how to explain but i'll show you guys then from there explain it to you guys so i'm just going to show you guys how to write an event and how it works then from there you guys will get the idea of what i'm trying to talk about so we're going to give it an on click event like that then equals to the name of the function that we are going to create in our javascript so we want to have a function of change let's call it change header like that then 
you need a bracket like that so that's basically what you want because it's a function so it has to take in the parameter like this so i'm going to put in this like that so what is this this is a keyword that's very popular in programming in general you make use of this keyword in other programming languages too so it's kind of a general thing if you understand this so if you know what this is for you can also apply it in java in python and other things so this is basically talking about the button so we have the function this function inside of the button so this is talking about the parents um the name the parent just the parent the parent of where it's located so if you have a function and you have inside the function you have like let me just write the function let's see change change header so you say equals to the other part to see it's like that so this is the way to create a function now at this not in like 2014 so you, you have a function like this then you want to write like this dot like something something like that blah 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 so you have you're, you're trying to talk about you're, you're telling it to locate change header because that's the parent this is the parent and you're trying to call the parent dot something like add event or anything you want to do so instead of writing change header dot you can just basically write this dot you see you're still trying to point to change header so that's what i'm trying to do so i'm just going to target the button right now to change the text of the header so i'm going to say let's call a variable you say variable header equals to document dot get element by id then you want to target the id which is header like that whoa stop 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 let me quickly explain what i just wrote so i have a variable called header right here and the variable is equal to document.get element by id what does that mean so i'm trying to see manipulate the dom by getting the value from the html documents so we have an id called header to get w the value of that header we have to call it in a javascript by using document.get element by id so if you have a class here like you have a class of header and you've styled your class and you want to call that class through javascript you have to use get element by class name that's another way of getting elements from your javascript from your um html and you can also get element from your css too also those are something we'll look at later but for now if if i target this header now in my javascript it's going to automatically change the text inside here so after getting that then i want to create the on click event that is going to make that work that's going to make that work so this is the on click here this is the event so if i just do um header like header now then header equals to uh, header dot inner html so i'm trying to change the value of this header id which is javascript for beginner so if i do header dot inner html then equals to then a text saying you you clicked the button like that let's see that so i'm trying to say whenever we click on this button it's going to carry out this function which is change header so for now i'm not going to remove this that this i was just trying to explain to you guys what this is actually used for so once i click on that button is going to change the text of that header to you clicked the button so let's try that out and see if it works i've not given the button a name so you say click me let's just use that 
then reload the page then we get a click me so let's let's see if it works so once you click the button awesome you see we, you clicked the button so it shows it shows you clicked the button so it's actually we are making use of javascript to manipulate the documents in our html so that's the awesome part of javascript so we are done with the boring part a little bit but we are still going to be doing a little bit of boring stuff but for now this is kind of cool you can now change um your document by clicking or there are other ways of doing this too so if i don't want to click the button like i just want to mouse over the button see you see on mouse over so we're going to select the mouse over so let's save that and see what happens load our page so once we what's going to happen is that i don't need to click the button but once i take my mouse over the button it changes can you see that it changes make i put my mouse over it so that's another way of doing things we're going to stick with the on click like that that's another way of doing things so that's one part of javascript so the next thing i want to show you guys now is we're going to be going deeper into the javascript course we're going to be doing more of DOM manipulation so i want to quickly do something different so i'm going to have before this button i'm going to have a label here oh sorry not here down here a label tag which is going to have taking an id well no there's no need for an id there so i was going to write the label so say change background so what i'm trying to do with this label is that i want it i want to get i want to have a select option down below below the label so once we select a background it changes the background of the entire page so i'm going to show you guys how to do that because i know you've been seeing some websites whereby you see red red colors then like the youtube channel now when you go on youtube then you can choose the dark theme then it changes everything to dark that that's more advanced than what i'm going to show you guys now but it's still it just gives you guys the feel of how that is done a little bit of this but not not even close to it but i'm just going to show you guys that so i'm going to have a select here like this then the select is going to take an unchange um event a javascript event handler which is going to take in a function that is going to contain this so that we can change we can get the value you get so that's what we're going to do now so we give it an idea of background then inside of the select we're going to have our options option like that so we're going to have red i'm not really a fan of red let's see orange then we're going to have other options too you then let's see let's see dark so we need to put in the values here so we want the value to be this one to be black then here to be teal and here to be orange like that so we're going to make use of the value to target that so that's for that so the next thing we want to do is to give the body a an id so we can target the body from our javascript so we go to the body give it an id of body like that so now we have um, an id to target our body then we have a label called background then we have a select select our background then we've not yet given it the unchange events that's going to we're going to use to trigger the events so we have unchange 
equals to change change bg so we're going to have a change bg function which is like change background function so once we um select something is going to change the background of the page so we're going to go up, go below this then create a change bg function then we have parentheses like that so we have our function so how are we going to make this to work to change the background first of all we need to take in a parameter which is we can call um let's say p let's call a parameter p so like that so here the, in the parameter i'm going to explain what i think i've explained what a parameter is earlier uh, okay i'm not so i'm going to do that by showing you what it is and from there explaining what it actually does so we have then taking a parameter here then after taking the parameter we want to target our body then give it a style so do that we see let body equals to then we want to get our body from uh html we see dot get element by id which is body so now we have our body tag right here we've targeted it the next thing we want to do is to do body dot style so we are styling it using the css style dot background as you can see the, the a lot we get we get a little bit of options using visual studio code so we say background like that then we want to equal that to x dot value okay no we we're using p so p dot value like that so whatever the value of the parameter is it's going to automatically change the background so that's all we want so the p is going to be this that's where the this comes in from the select like that so these are parameter we are going to be taking in this and what is this this is the select sorry for the noise so this is the select so we are trying to target the options as changes so we're taking an option it's going to come in here then we are going to get that as a parameter here then instead of p it's going to be this this dot value which is the value of the select which are these options here so let's see if what we the code we've been writing actually works so if we go here select you you see it works it changes the background to a teal background select dark changes to black which you can not see anything select orange it changes to orange if you click me you click the button so that's a few of what javascript can do on the front end how we can change things make it more interactive not just a dummy website without any functionality or uh, without any interaction with the user now it's kind of fun to just sit here and keep on clicking on this this um, stuff like that and that that's what makes your website a little bit fun to go to because of you created some really cool functions inside of it so I, I want to try something now this is a little bit of experiment i haven't tried it before but i just want to do it right now i'm trying to get some other colors let's see material material colors so let's just choose i think i use this Okay, I want to get a little bit of gray into so it has copied the color. Go down to our code and let me change this black to a little bit of gray. Let's see if it works. If we can put into the a, a custom color. So let's go back to our code, which is here, which is this. Reload. Then we have dark and it works it changes instead of black now it's taking the gray so you can customize this into whatever you want
so the next thing we are going to do now i'm going to leave this for you guys to go back and look at i'm just going to comment them out so now we're going to be actually going into form validation so we don't need this label and so we're just going to the video is already taking too long i have to quickly create a form into close that and instead we're going to have a basic div dot form dash group like that then we have an input sorry i'm rushing i don't want this video to take too much of your time but it's basically a um, basic html css place order with enter your name like that so then do the same thing does that work it doesn't work so i'm just going to copy and paste this so we have enter your um last name so we need to give all this an id so we can target them using javascript so we say id then say first name so yeah i'm going to change this to last name like that so the next thing i want to give it is an arrow so we also need to display errors so i was going to do that for both of them so we're going to have a span here like that which is going to take a style color of let's say i don't know i just like the brown on it's called um the custom brown that comes with the um color palette on which you actually could it looks like red but it's not actually red so the next thing i want to do is to give it an id like that so if you see first name arrow like that then here we just have to change this to second name last name i mean so last name error so it's just going to be a basic form with two fields then we have another div here with the button in there let's let's make it an input so type of submit like that then value of um, value of uh, what do you call it okay form let's just add password to this it's more to make it more interesting so control v so we say enter your password like that so call it password the text type password so you don't want the password to be showing out like that so we save that let's take a look load then we have our form oh i will have to remove that button which is this one so i want to quickly put a simple break tag this is something i want to do on a normal day because i'm going to be using css to do that but i don't want this video to extend to css i'm going to be putting a break tag that's going to give it a little bit of spacing at the bottom so we, so we have the spacing so we're going to move into javascript so what we want to do with javascript is that we want to be able to click this button and if all these fields are empty we want it to give an error before sending the form over to the php side so that's what we want to do and if it's there are also the other criteria too we're going to be making use of so i'm just going to go back to the javascript here to do that so but for this part of javascript i want to let me just do it here it's not to waste time so we're going to have a form of submit form like that equals to this so it's basically a function that's going to handle the submission of the form so we have to place that 
instead of year so we see width equals to submit form and we have our function right there so we just basically wanted to call the function the, to test the function let's just console log they want to show radiation working and that, let's go down there and see reload and let's click submit so it's kind of working but it's it doesn't stay like the page is reloading immediately after we click so let's see if we can fix that so let's take in events here let me see um event dot prevent sorry so what this does is just to stop it from reloading the page until it executes the form cannot read property prevent default sorry event dot prevent default it's not working so what we're going to do now if this doesn't work to stop this from doing that you have to change this input to a type of button so uh, this one should surely work definitely will work okay it's not working it's supposed to work tap a button submit form okay i think i know what's going on i need to add an event listener for that so instead of using the on submit let's use the on click here like that let's try that's one thing about program you just have to keep trying until you get it right so now it's working as you can see so as we submit it shows us validation working so now we can carry carry out our validation so it's always good to kind of test your function before you start typing things into it so it doesn't get really big and you're trying to debug where the problem is coming from it's going to be lots lots harder to debug at that point without testing your code at first so what we did is to change this to an on click event so as we click on the button it submits the form for us so that's that's just basically what it's doing let's try and change this back to submit and let's see if it will i doubt if it will work but let's see so it doesn't it's not working but let's let's add the event let's see if it work then we we'll come over here and see like that let's go back to our code reload and let's hope it works it doesn't still work so let's just revert back to the way we did things yeah like this so let's just test it one more time to be sure it's not working i think this back i was going to on submit form button oh, we remove the console log so it's not going to work but surely the function is working so now let's go on with the validation so the first thing we want to check for is the first name so we want to get this by id let's copy that then we want to say let's first name equals to document dot get element by id i'm going to be a little bit faster because i've explained what this code actually means so we're going to duplicate that so we can get that for last name last name so we call this so i'm putting the error here instead of just the name I need to copy that so now we have the first and the last name then we need one more for the password sorry about that we need to change this ctrl d to select both of them then we see password i'm going to call it data for this part 
it doesn't really matter what you put in this is the variable you're going to be making use of in your function so it doesn't really affect anything so yeah, but if you're going to be making use of multiple function and you're drawing the same data it's better to remove this from the function and put them outside like this so that you can call them from you can fetch the data inside here from other functions like that and it still works out for you but you put it inside a function is limited to that function so another function cannot access the data from inside of this function you have to do some other kind of complex shit so but it's always better to just put them outside and draw them into the function then make use of them like that is better so now once we click on the button we want it to validate for the first time so we say if there are two ways of doing this we can either create a separate function for validate validating the mail and um, the name then calling those function inside the submit form but for now we're going to keep it simple so we say first name is equals to null that is if it's a null value which we don't want or that's the meaning of this pipe it means all or if first name I forgot to put the dot value so we have to put the value remember I said the dot value is used to grab the text inside of the text field so that's why we need the dot value is very important it's equals to empty string so that's the condition you no know, be treated if else statement so we want to um first name error dot that's the that's why i created the um span tag so you can place the error into them html so we're going to copy this text inside the span tag using um, javascript so we want to write name field be left blank so that's going to be our error then we want to return false so it can stop the um, form from submitting so we see else if another condition is going to go in here I can't type well I know what's going on with my hands today and so we're going to say else if first name dot value dot the length so we are checking for the length of the value because we want to check how many letters the person is going to enter into the field that we are using the length oh no not last name length like that so we want to check if the length is less than three so if the person imputes a b it's less than three so it's going to give the person an error that your name is too short please add more um, letters to make it longer so that's basically what we want to do here so we say else if first name dot value dot length is less than three so you want to say first name error dot inner html equals to um name um, characters so let's say name field as contain three and above like that so as in the name field must contain three characters and above so that's what we're trying to tell the person then we also return false like that so the next thing we want to do is the else so we want to check for else so in case if it doesn't return that so we want to check for something else so we want to make the name error field to be empty so in case if we have no error if the person passes all the remaining credentials we just want to allow the form to go through to the database like that so we want to empty back empty out the 
um the error field so we say first name error equals to an empty string like that so that's what that what that's basically going to do it it's going to make the span tag empty once again it's going to take out the text so that's what we want to do for the first name so to not slow you down we're going to copy this for the last name because basically kind of the same thing just the errors are going to be different but the could what the validation is exactly the same so we're going to change this to last name error okay i'm just going to control d or the areas where have first name error then same like that then wherever i have first name i'm going to do the same thing control d like that to last name like that so we're, we're checking let me just put a comment here like that so we're checking for the last name if it's no or empty it should print out this error then return false then else if the last name the length is less than is less than three characters we should also print out the error else it should just empty the um, the um, error span and let the value go through to the database so that's for the first and my last and the last one we're going to point out is the password so we're going to basically copy and paste that i think that is also almost also the same thing so we we'll also do control d d uh, that country d d then change that to password like that then you want to change this to control d d then change this to password error then you have to change this not from name you see last name here yeah. just remember that. last name like that so you want to say the password so the password for you cannot be left blank for the first error then the second error we're going to check if the password is less than seven characters because password has to be really long a little bit for more security of the person's um, account so you want to say if it's less than seven then it should say password field must contain seven characters and above that's for that then else just leave it empty leave the error um, empty then let it go through so that's all for validation but if you remember we haven't linked we haven't um, um placed collected the span ids from the index.html so we're going to go back there and get those ids so which is first name error last name error then password error like that so we're going to collect those values using the same way we did it. so just going to control control shift d to duplicate if you're using sublime things i think it's control d or control shift d so just try it out to see if it works for you so yeah i'm going to see name error like that so yeah i'm going to see last name last name error here yeah. let's select that name password error for this one my thing sorry i just want to do the control d okay it's not picking that one up so let me see then come here and do so don't forget this is the id name then this is the javascript variable name but this name is coming from your html id which is this 
so don't mix that up even though they look i'm using the same variable name for both of them that does not mean they are the same this is what we are using to validate right here in our javascript we cannot start writing all this line dot value inside here that we usually place them into variables to hold those data for us then we are going to make use of those variables to validate the form field so let's just save this and test this out so if we load we don't get and uh, no no errors here so let's just click and see so it's telling us name field cannot be blank you see that's working so you put in two values let's see if it changes so name field must contain three characters and above that's working so let's put my name let's say drop code there then try to submit it tells us last name field cannot be left blank so i'm just going to put joshua there which is my actual name then say the password field cannot be left blank so if i do one two three four five six seven eight nine it's supposed to clear out spots there's a mistake here now could you notice the errors are not clearing out after after we are uh, we have been validated so we have to check that mm, i see where the mistake is coming from we didn't put dot in our html in the error so hope you guys saw that and changed yours and if you didn't then let's just make the changes so i've selected them all then in our h ML. so let's check back and reload our page and i'm just going to type go there to my writing like that let me submit it clears out so it's working fine so now i'm just going to put joshua then it clears out it's working fine one two three four five six seven eight nine then submit form you see it works fine so that's basically what that's where this is where we are going to stop for the video so if you love my content please subscribe to this channel i'm going to be raising, re, um, releasing more videos as the time goes on but for now i'm not going to release too much videos because i'll soon be going back to school and when going back to college um this semester is going to be starting soon so i'm trying to get myself ready for this semester but next week i'm still going next week monday i'm going to be releasing the other javascript video which is going to be called the practical javascript video using plain javascript because most people now make use of jquery to do everything they do but i just want to touch on how to do all those same things using the normal javascript so i really appreciate you guys for watching this video if you like the video please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos that are coming and thank you for watching peace